Hi, everybody. It's Gina Barrett. I'm the volunteer acting director of Casa de Paz SLV. And here I am in Crestone, Colorado, which is where we're based. We have a healing arts studio here and a ranch with some horses that are being trained for horse therapy. And our healing arts studio is for uh, any kind of holistic trauma support that uh, is needed and that we have volunteers or staff available to provide to asylum seekers and new immigrants. And nowadays, because of the uh, Remain in Mexico policy, uh, most asylum seekers are on the Mexico side right now. And those people who are here in the U.S. are often busy paying for their legal fees that are quite high, as I hear, thousands of dollars, their fee to uh, get a coyote to take them to the U.S. or their trains and buses that they take. And people are really scared to leave their homes, so uh, most of the places that offer services on the U.S. side aren't as busy, but I'm uh, hoping as the more and more that we go to the border for our border missions, uh, that we attract more and more asylum seekers to our center. In the meantime, we're training our babies here. They're not actually babies there. This is Molly. She's, I think she's seven now. And we have Darling, who is eight. And they were rescued from traumatic life of, uh, they were driving horses. And all we really know is they were probably in a lot of accidents and they probably had pretty rough traditional training. And it's taken us, I think we've had them like two years. So it's taken us this long to get them to come to us. And they actually like getting groomed and they like being trained. And their riding ability for riders is probably more like intermediate level. We'll at some point be able to uh, have people, you know, maybe sit and on them and walk around they're probably even ready for that at this point but one of the things that asylum seekers and new immigrants can do here and i do have basic spanish fluency and we do have translators but i'm not gonna trouble you with my basic spanish right now but you know when people come here they'll be learning english and we'll be using the spanish that we know and have studied and uh, there are also people coming from Africa who speak English. So I'm just going to do it in English for now, but know that the, the, the Spanish is available here. And one of the first things that you can do with the horse is, well, catch it, which I just did. And then grooming it really helps you to create a relationship with the horse. So I'm just going to walk through grooming and show you what it's all about so that you can experience it and uh, hopefully, you know, get the, the same effects that I get from connecting with the horse through video and also just to prepare you to come and try it yourself. So I've got a bucket here and this is called a curry comb. And the horses love this because it uh, scratches them and they like to be scratched. So what I do is I'm going to show Molly the curry comb. And what we practice is natural horsemanship. So we don't force the horse to do anything. We let the horse let us groom it. And the whole time, you know, I'm keeping an eye on the horse's face and ears. Usually ears straight back mean that it's mad. So it's not mad at me right now. It's just kind of paying attention to what I'm doing. And Molly's also used to me not 
talking to somebody else when I'm grooming. I usually have my full attention on her. So that's definitely a little bit of a difference for her that she needs to get used to. And we're, we're uh, wanting Molly to get used to all kinds of different people and new people that might bump into her or do things a little bit uh, not as graceful or tuned in. I'm super tuned in to what I'm doing most of the time, but we're training her to handle all kinds of different things. We, uh, part of what I'll do later is I train with a, a flag, like a plastic flag that makes all kinds of noise and I rub it all over her and around her and so she gets used to it. So what we're doing is making circles here to loosen up the dirt. And then when I walk around the back, I stay really connected to her. And then I'm gonna come right up to the front again and show her the curry comb. And then brush in circles on this side. And the whole time I'm creating a, a nice connection with her so she feels my personality, which is a pretty fast moving personality for the most part but some days I'm tired so she gets used to all that and again I stay in contact with her and I make sure I kind of have my eye on her <laughs> and her feet got to make sure you're away from any kind of kick or um, that might happen, any kind of spook. They're like big deer, so they get spooked pretty easily. So Molly is a halflinger painted pony. She's a draft horse, and she's just under 14 hands, so she's a pony and not a horse. So this is the next brush. This is a hard brush. And this also gets rid of the dirt. And you don't put this on the face, you don't put the curry comb on the face, but you see I'm showing Molly it. She's kind of approving. I'm brushing her mane with it and underneath. And since this is hard, I also don't brush the, the legs because the legs don't have a lot of uh, flesh or muscle on them. So I just do it on her thick parts. Speaking of thick, our horses are overweight. <laughs> um, we've been away and it's winter and they like to eat a lot in the winter. And they just haven't been getting as much training because of the cold. None of us want to be out in the cold, but they do fine out in the cold. Part of what you're seeing is just a lot of, their, they look fat, but it's a lot of fur too. And it's probably fat. You know, we all fatten up in the winter to stay warm. So, you know, I'm picking at her tail because she's got these like, sticky plants in her tail and she's starting to shuffle her feet so I'm staying off to the side and I'll brush her tail off to the side. You never want to just be right behind them. You don't want to set yourself up to be kicked. Alright. I always clean the brushes. There's a whole like cleaning uh, system that we do just to keep everything as clean as possible <laughs> for, a, for a barn <laughs> and this is the soft brush so this one I can do on her face and 
she's had definitely some abuse on her face, so I do need to hold this Mustang halter and just kind of ask her to stay with me for this. You can see her ears went back. She's definitely been, um, her ears have been abused. Sometimes uh, people like twist their ears to make them obey. So she's going to push away like that and then I have to show her I'm not going to hurt her. So I just keep doing it. And this is more of a training technique. But you also don't want to just give in to her fear. So it's like while I work on my own fear, I'm helping her with her fear. So totally reciprocal arrangement here. So her face is done and now I'm just gonna do one last brush on the whole body with the soft brush. You always get in front. I don't know if you can see me way down here, but you get in front of the foot when you're brushing the legs, not behind for safety. Good girl, Molly. Good girl. So she did that second side better because I didn't let her move away from it. I didn't let her let her past trauma take over her nervous system in the present moment. So when we're dealing with trauma, we're always coming back to the moment. You're safe now in this new safe situation. And that takes time for people and animals. Uh, these guys, it took a couple years of, this is all they do is they receive their trauma healing or transformation by being all loved up by us for two years straight. And no force, uh, no work. So it just kind of brings me back to the asylum seekers and how the culture, from what I'm told, uh, and you can see it in the South as well, uh, is all about working. And one woman who runs a immigration center told me, this is how we deal with our trauma, by working. And what I, my response to her was, and the trauma will leak, and you know that. And I do have a mental health counselor at that center, and Casa de Paz volunteers there as well. When we're done with our border work, that's where we're needed the most right now. So uh, I'm just gonna pick her feet. I don't know if you can see that. You might be able to see it, at least, you know, part of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna show her the hook pick. Good girl, Mom. And then I am like kind of right up against her and I bring my hand, you know, it's just like any massage therapist would always guide their hand down the body so you're not just like reaching or grabbing. Very traumatic for anybody who's experienced physical abuse, sexual abuse. So we just slowly approach from where we have been brushing down and then she just lifts her foot up because she's trained now but when we used to do this when we first got her she used to bite my butt so um, people and horses that experience trauma will often 
act out against anybody who might also inflict abuse on them. So that was what she used to do, but now she knows that I'm not gonna hurt her so she doesn't try to bite my butt. But because she's tried to bite my butt, I'm actually always on guard. <laughs> so one day we'll heal that. I'm gonna do the next foot. And she picks it right up and I hold uh, the hook in my left hand and then I pick this V in her, her barefoot hooves. I pick out that and clean it up. When I got back from three weeks in Texas doing the border mission, um, I don't think their feet had been picked or there was a lot of mud and their hooves were actually rotting. So um, now their hooves are good now that I'm cleaning at least this one. The other pony is uh, my husband John Renee's pony so I don't know what's going on with that one most of the time but occasionally I take care of her too, train her. So I'm going to go on to the other side and finish. Again always connecting with her butt starting at the front. And go working my way back. Very good, Molly. Nice job. So pretty much done with the grooming. So now we're going to go out into our arena and uh, going to do some. Um, usually walk and trot on the lunge line, which is like a big long leash. And we do some turning on the front feet, turning on the back feet, lowering her head, bending her neck, um, backing up. I practice mounting her and I lay on her, which you may have seen pictures of. And then at the end, I practice with that flag that makes a lot of noise and scary. And I get her used to that. And then I'm gonna take her, walk her on a, the trail. And I'm just don't have the energy. I'm, it's really hard living off grid in the winter. So I don't have the energy to deal with the saddle and all. So I'm not gonna ride her today. There also isn't anybody here in case something happens to me. Uh, so we always have deep respect for these big, fast animals, make sure we're safe. And uh, yeah, I'll get on her when somebody else is here. Maybe I'll send you some videos of that and pictures, but there's plenty also on the page. Thanks for viewing and joining me, doing one of my favorite things to do when I'm taking a break from the computer and just really feeling tense from that needing to connect with nature and afterwards I always feel tired and clear and I take a shower and kind of either need to rest or I'm ready for more and we're gonna today we're gonna send out press releases for the auction and you know, our partnership with Donna Strongheart Godwin, who has created 10 paintings over the past couple weeks, uh, original paintings that really uh, depict the border journey. And she has just been, you know, watching a lot of YouTube videos and reading the articles. And, you know, someday she'll come down and volunteer with us. Uh, but for now, we just want to get it out there, uh, see how much we can get for her strong love painting. And uh, that bids are open until December 15th at midnight. I think the highest bid is 150 now. So let's uh, keep getting it up there. So we have lots of money to bring to the border for 
basic needs support. We'd like to buy a meal and uh, at least one meal costs about a thousand dollars to feed the asylum seeker is a dollar a person that's all it costs and food's pretty decent and um going to be visiting u.s shelters and offering trauma support services for people who were just released from these um, it's you can't even everybody uses the word horrific but that's getting overused it's like you can't even describe what these poor people are going through in those detention centers and we serve them on the u.s side when they're released and we're serving many 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 more people on the mexico side offering trauma-informed classes art music movement and private uh, trauma support sessions depending on who attends but i'm a phoenix rising yoga therapist which is all about trauma healing trauma transformation and uh yeah so keep spreading the word about us we aren't a nonprofit yet so it's all grassroots uh volunteers and money it's kind of cool like all the people i'm starting to lose track because i think last fundraiser we had like 75 donors and this one we probably had just in the past couple of weeks 20 to 30 donors i can't really remember but i'm starting to lose track and i just i love and appreciate all of you for supporting this uh, mission to provide holistic trauma support which is so so needed based on the trauma that is experienced on the immigration journey and then once they get into the u.s uh, i heard so many stories that after the detention center, their spirits have been killed, the children and the adults. So, you know, how do we prevent that? And how do we transform that on this side? I mean, it's just, think about people that are really low income trying to transform it. And the first thing that comes to mind is that love heals. So let's keep amping up the love for the border missions and for the uh, future trauma transformation that must happen and please send people here to Casa de Paz SLV in Crestone, Colorado. Thank you so much for all you do for listening and loving. Happy holidays, happy solstice, and happy new year. Blessings.